Hey guys, what's going on? Peyton here once again, and welcome back to another episode of my PSG career on FIFA 14. I know, I know, it's been a small while since I uploaded some PSG career. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to get this done before FIFA 15 is released. I'm going to be trying my best. I'm going to be going for the, that final dash now. Uh, to the uh, the finishing line just to see if I could get this season completed. I mean, I haven't even reached the uh, the January transfer window yet. It's madness. So I've just been concentrating mainly on my uh, United career mode, as you guys know, and also my other United career mode on uh, Football Manager. It's going to be mental, especially when all these new games start coming out that I'm going to be doing playthroughs of. Like uh, Shadow of Mordor, that's one game I'd love to do a playthrough of on this channel. Even though I'm not really a huge follower of the uh, the J.R.R. Tolkien uh, series, The Lord of the Rings. But it just looks like a mint game that I'd love to get myself involved with. I know some of you have requested that I do a playthrough of it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. So yeah, the gaming season is almost upon us, especially for us uh, FIFA players. Because obviously it's released at the end of September, round right about there. I just can't wait. I'm so excited for uh, the new FIFA. I saw a video here on YouTube not so long ago um, of some of the new faces in the game. Someone like uh, Yanazai from Manchester United, Phil Jones. Oh, it's brilliant. Cannot wait for it. It's just got real FIFA. I know, I know I've made a video not so long ago talking about FIFA and what to expect and so on, but it, I'm just excited and I hope you guys are too. And I can't wait to get going with career mode. Uh, I know some of you have, have asked me, what team are you going to start off with? Again, I, I will be putting together a poll uh, before uh, FIFA 15 is released, of course, and you guys can come along, you can vote of what team you think I should do. So anyway, let's talk about what's been happening recently in my PSG career. As you've been watching some of the highlights from the first game in this episode, it was against Nice in the French League. And a win in this game was a must because our last couple of games, they haven't been the best Plus Marseille are starting to catch us up now in the league. They're right behind us. So we need to make sure we stay on top of uh, those performances and those results and just and maintain our position at the top of the league. You just saw Ibrahimovic's goal as well. Fantastically taken. It's beautiful. 20, 25 yards out. Just struck the ball. Keeper, no chance. No chance of getting a fingertip to it. And it just flew into the back of the net. And just a thing. If a goal like that was scored on FIFA 15, the net would be lifting. Ah, oh, you know what? I can't. Just thinking about those small little details they've added to the game this year. It's just going to make the game a little bit better. It's going to be amazing. So, as you just saw as well, PSG extended their lead to three. Cavani with a simple tap in. I love that bit of play. Crossing the ball in, finding someone at the far post, heading it back down into the centre of the box, finding Cavani in space. We went 4-0 up against Nice in the 81st minute. It was Thomas Muller who took the shot and it was a cruel deflection which saw the ball go into the back of the net. It fooled the goalkeeper. He went one way whilst the ball went the other after the ball struck one of his centre-halves. So you'll see it better here on the replay. Probably not from this angle so much. But you, you can see the defender jumps up in the air trying to just block it. Here's a much better camera angle and you can see the ball glancing off the guy's thigh into the back of the net. I think there's one more replay. Yeah, this one's much better as you'll see. Oh no, it actually came off the guy's knee, off his kneecap. That's going to hurt, especially the power that Thomas Muller struck the ball. So the final score anyway, PSG thrashed Nice 4-0. Doesn't get any better than that heading into the next game, which would of course be in the Champions League. Now this season's Champions League for PSG... You know, considering that the team that I've built here, this OP PSG team, we seem to be doing okay, but struggling at the same time. We've won two, we've drawn two, and you've got Atletico Madrid and Sporting Lisbon breathing down our neck, trying to overtake us and knock us further down that group, maybe knock us out of the Champions League altogether. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in my previous episode, but I have switched up the formation, so no longer am I using the 4-2-3-1 formation. I've now switched to the uh, the 3 4 one, 2 which is very similar to the one that I'm using in my United career mode here on FIFA 14 as well. And as I've said before, you know, I'm really liking this formation. It seems to be working out for me at the moment. We beat Nice, as you saw at the start of this episode, 4-0. You know, it creates so many goal-scoring opportunities. It allows you to really get in the face of the opposition and push forwards. And as I've mentioned in my United career, you know, it allows me to have two strikers up front 
and also an attacking midfielder. So in our case, because before it was, it was kind of annoying me that I was having to play Cavani on the wing. He's not a winger, he's a complete forwards. He is a striker. So having him work alongside Ibrahimovic now up front is brilliant. And so Thomas Muller can stay in his position where he was uh, before with the old formation. So everything it seems to be working out at the moment. We did go 1-0 up against Sporting Lisbon in the 26th minute. But just look at this for an attack by Sporting Lisbon. How they just ripped me apart. Uh, at this moment, I just don't know what I was playing at. What was going on? Montero with the equaliser. I, I was shocked. I was like, well, how did that happen? You know, just a minute after we've just scored, instant reply from Sporting Lisbon. Very frustrating when things like that happen. You know, you saw me trying to intercept the ball there with uh, Hazard. Just wasn't good enough. Uh, Montero with a good good control of the ball chesting it down and on the volley just slip that one past to Stegen so both teams found themselves back to the way it was until Ibrahimovic moments later Ibrahimovic found the back of the net for the second time for PSG putting them into the lead once again just using his height his weight everything his demeanor to his advantage and so I was happy with that heading into the break being in the lead against Sporting Lisbon the last time we played against Lisbon um, in the I think it was our first game and it was at home in the uh, the Champions League group stage this season and that game ended nil-nil so I was happy to see goals being scored in this fixture but as soon as the ref restarted the game for the second half Elias just minutes into it Lisbon found themselves back in the game and then I knew straight away that I had one hell of a game on my hands and it was going to be difficult to come away with a good result in this one yes I'd be happy with the draw obviously I would want the win and we had a good opportunity to find that lead again after Cavani it was given the advantage there but eventually Sporting Lisbon got possession of the ball ref gave the free kick Ibrahimovic stepped up to take it it was the perfect opportunity to put ourselves back in the lead against Sporting Lisbon but it just goes sailing wide and so unfortunate I expected better of him in a position like that but at the other end Sporting Lisbon took the ball in the 75th minute great control just bringing it down and it happened so quickly found the back of the net again and Sport Lisbon won the game 3-2 so we dropped all three points there it was so crucial for us to actually win that game it's just making things harder on ourselves heading into the next game against Atletico Madrid we need to win that one if we don't then I could see us maybe bailing out of the Champions League after the group stage how embarrassing will that be especially with this OP team that I've put together here that would be so frustrating as well to think that I actually set my objectives to win the Champions League this season and we can't even do that so then we just have to concentrate on the league our next game was against uh, Bastia and look at this we just in poor form over these last two games Cavani with a great chance there I think I was holding down the L1 button don't know why don't don't ask me why in the comment section because I don't know it I know it was a perfect chance to just slot the ball into the back of the net and find the lead against Bastia but still couldn't do it Gundogan had a good chance here and uh, again just closed down just sandwiched between the two center halves that just forcing Gundogan off the ball and I love this by Levetsi look at that nice little step over after the challenge was made by the right back he stuck out his leg but Levetsi continued on and that opened up the, their, their defence pretty much the box for him to run into loads of space as Cavani was playing as the uh, the distraction for their uh, centre half as he concentrated on Cavani and that allowed Levetsi to go and get the first goal for PSG so with the floodgates wide open for PSG Ben Semmer made it too and it's so good to see him on the score sheet because when I first signed him at the start of this season in the summer transfer window and I think it's fair to say he, he was showing signs in the, in the first couple of weeks that he was going to be a flop and he was going to turn out to be a huge mistake bringing in for Real Madrid for such a huge fee I think it was something like 31, 32 mil he hasn't started to repay that back yet but hopefully before the, uh, the season does end we can say that he's had a good season he's managed to turn it around I couldn't help conceding against Bastia they did claw a goal back in this game it was it was terrible by David Luiz the challenge he was nowhere near <laughs> making that slide tackle what was I thinking and yes with that that goal that they clawed back at the start of the, uh, the second half it gave them confidence to go on and get an equaliser and that's what they did to Stegen 
I did expect better of him to maybe get a hand to it, just palm it away. And then they found themselves in the lead with just seven minutes to go of the game and they they held on to it. We lost the game. How can I lose against Bishtia, a team that I absolutely thrashed last season? Not good enough. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this episode. I'll see you all very soon for the next one. Thanks for watching.